Hello everybody! These are the fiberglass body shells I created from a 3D printed mold for my Power Wheels race car. I've received a lot of questions about exactly how I made these, so I put together this video to walk you through my process. For fiberglass, I'm just using the stuff that's readily available as patch kits at the large home repair stores. It's sold under the Bondo brand name. I'm sure there's better stuff out there, but this is what was readily available when I started. At the point this video was made, I'd already pulled six copies of the shells out of these molds, and they're starting to look a little worse for the wear. I start each casting cycle by thoroughly cleaning the mold with warm, soapy water, and then apply a fresh coat of Part All Number 2 paste. The Part All paste helps fill in any rough spots in the mold and prevents the fiberglass resin from having a place to grab onto. Apply the wax to the surface with a soft towel, let it dry for a minute, and then buff it to a shine using a clean section of the towel. I'll put links in the description to where I bought each of these products. I printed the parts for this mold in my MakerBot Z18, which is my shop's primary workhorse 3D printer. It will do objects up to 12 by 12 by 18 inches, and that 18 inch height is what set the maximum size of this mold. The large back shell you see me working with is just 17 and a half inches tall. With all the parts of the mold cleaned and waxed, it's time to apply a layer of mold release. This is a thin, high-quality PVA that forms an impermeable barrier between the mold surface and the fiberglass resin. It's water-soluble, so after casting, any rem remnants can be removed from the mold and the finished part with warm water. The instructions call for the PVA to be applied with a spray gun, but I don't have one. So I'll brush it on with a foam brush. Make sure to coat all surfaces of the mold that may come into contact with the resin. It's way easier to apply extra PVA than it is to rebuild the entire mold because your part permanently bonded to it somewhere. This mold was designed using Fusion 360 to first create a model of the body panel I wanted to produce. And then I used that model to create an inverse surface against the mold. The mold breaks into these five parts so that the hardened fiberglass can be removed at the end of the process without having to resort to breaking the mold. The mold parts are PLA plastic, and the inner surface has been finished smooth by a combination of filler primer and wet sanding. A coated magenta spray paint helps me see where the mold has been damaged, and a final thick top coat of clear gloss seals all the layers of paint together. There are many other videos on YouTube to guide you through the process of painting and sanding a 3D print, so I'm not going to go into it in great detail here. The five parts of the mold are bolted together to make a complete unit. After they are assembled, I brush a little more PVA on the joints, just to be double sure the fiberglass resin will not run down into the bolt threads, which would make disassembly of the mold a nightmare. And we're ready to start fiberglassing. This first coat is called the gel coat. It forms the part's smooth outer layer. I apply it evenly to the inside of the mold, and then we'll wait 30 minutes until it sets to a point where it's no longer liquid. The best process for this resin is to work in small batches. I do two ounces at a time. I've pre-marked each of these disposable cups with a line at the two ounce part. I then add 20 drops of hardener and mix it with a disposable knife. With the gel coat solidified, we'll start adding the fiberglass. I've pre-cut these pieces, so I don't have to try to do things on the fly. This process gets messy and sticky fast, so it pays to plan ahead and have plenty of flesh gloves available. Each layer of fiberglass cloth is impregnated with a mixture of fiberglass resin. The best way to do this is with a disposable paintbrush used in a dabbing motion to push the resin into the cloth's fibers. The paintbrush has to be disposable, because there's no real way to save it from the effects of the hardening resin. As I work my way around the mold, I'll first put down a layer of, wo of woven fiberglass cloth to support the outer surface of the part and give it shell strength. I'll follow up these two layers with two layers of randomly oriented fiberglass mat to increase the part's thickness and overall rigidity. These shells need to support my full weight and I found that the more layers of fill I put in, the more strength and rigidity the part tends to have. Keep working your way around the mold, one layer at a time. Work with the brush to keep any bubbles from forming underneath the fiberglass surface, and 
to make sure that the mat is completely impregnated with the resin. Any dry spots are going to be weak spots in the finished part. As we work, a quick word on safety. This resin is polyester based, meaning you really don't want to breathe the fumes. Fiberglassing is a process de best done outside, in the fresh air, while wearing a respirator mask that's able to filter out volatile organics. I'm wearing gloves, an apron, eye protection, and my respirator. To some extent, the wet resin can be cleaned up using lacquer thinner, but our better plan is to work on top of a sacrificial surface. Here, I'm using a disposable Harbor Freight tarp. After 30 to 45 minutes, the fiberglass will have cured enough to trim. Use a sharp knife to trim away any excess fiberglass from the top of the mold while it's still in this slightly flexible straight state. It's way easier to trim it now than it will be in a few hours. At that point, you're going to have to use an angle grinder or some sort of abrasive tool to cut away any excess fiberglass from the top of the mold. Believe me, I learned this from painful experience. After a further two hours of curing, the part is fully hardened and ready to come out of the mold. The last step, before demolding, is to drill the mounting holes I'll need to secure this panel to my project's metal frame. By drilling each of these holes through the guide holes I've created in the mold, I ensure that the final mounting points will be the same on each and every shell that I produce. With the bolts removed from the mold, each section of the mold should break away from the finished part cleanly. It may take a little bit of an application of gentle force, but avoid the temptation to pry with any kind of tool that could damage the inner surface of the mold or the finished part itself. The advantages to the fiberglassing process make it really attractive to use as a complement to 3D printing. If I were to 3D print these shells on the Z18, each one would take more than 48 hours to make. Then they'd need to be hand finished and they wouldn't have anywhere near the strength of these fiberglass parts. This way, I can make one shell every four to six hours, and all of that sanding and finishing and polishing work only had to be done once on the original mold. And then there's the added bonus of I have the full strength of a fiberglass part, as opposed to the questionable strength of a big chunk of PLA. And there we have it. Another fiberglass part made from a 3D printed mold. There might be a little bit of PVA residue left on the outer surface of the part, but that can be washed off with warm water and soap. I hope you found this video helpful, and feel free to ask me any questions about the process in the comments below. Thanks for watching.